Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In last lesson, we saw that matter has an atomic nature, namely, matter is composed by atoms. In the theory, atomic theory of Dalton, Dalton thought that atom cannot be shared, cannot be divided farther. This is the only point in which Dalton failed, because uh, atoms can be further divided. Actually, it is seen that the various elements may assume completely different properties uh, depending on the condition in which they are, depending on the condition on the other atom with which they create bond. And it, this fact can, could be explained only in a way that the atoms are composed by other subatomic particles. It must be said that atom is a sort of universe that is uh, almost totally unexplored. And what is known about atoms is far less of what is unknown about about atoms. So, in this lesson in which we will study the structure of the atoms, we will just study the main subatomic particles, which are electrons, protons and neutrons, just to understand the chemical properties of the various elements. Uh, so, let's see which are the main subatomic particles that are of interest of chemistry. These subatomic particles are electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons, uh, two electrons has been ascribed negative charge. They have a mass which is very, very low. Exactly the mass of electron is 5 per 10 atmosphere un uh, um, unit atom mass which is equal to 9.11 per 10 at minus 28 grams. Protons, to protons has been ascribed positive charge. The mass is 1.0073 uh, unit mass, uh, uh, unit atom mass, which is equal to 1.673 per 10 at minus 24 grams and neutrons has no electrical charge and exhibit a mass of 1.0087 unit atom mass, which is equal to 1.675 per 10 at minus 24. First of all, I would like to say that it has been the man who has ascribed negative charge to electrons and positive charge to protons. It could have been also exactly the opposite. But man has chosen that negative charge is ascribed to electrons and positive charge is ascribed to protons. Then it is usually said that electrons has no mass. It is not completely true. But look at this. The mass of electron is 5 per 10 at minus 4 unit atom mass, whereas the mass of proton is slightly higher than 1 unit atom mass, and also neutron exhibit a mass which is slightly higher than 1 unit atom mass. It is said that the electron has no mass. Why? If you sum the mass of electron to the mass of protons or the mass of neutrons, the mass of protons make very high. The, the fourth decimal uh, number of the mass of protons or the mass of neutrons. So it is not true that electron has no mass, you know, but it can be said that electron exhibit a mass that can be neglected with respect to the mass of protons and neutrons. Because about the, elect the mass of the electron is about 10,000 times lower 
than the mass of protons and the mass of neutrons. Then it must be said that the electron is the smallest existing electrical charge and it is equal to 1.60 per 10 at minus 19 coulomb. And all the existing electrical charge are multiple according to a wall number of this electrical charge. Well, it must be reminded that the charge of a coulomb is that charge that is attracted by another one coulomb charge of the opposite sign with the force of one newton when these two electrical charge are located one meter away from each other. You know, here it is reported the Coulomb law, namely the Coulomb law says that the force of attraction of repulsion of two electrical charge is equal to minus k, which multiplies q1, q2, divided by d elevated at the second power. You know, q1 and q2 are the electrical charge. The sign minus means that if the two charge are of opposite sign, the uh, occurs attraction between these two charge. Whereas when the two charge are of the same sign, an repulsion, a strength of repulsion arises from the fact that these two charge have the same sign. Then K is a, um, a constant which depends on the medium in which we are measuring the strength occurring between these two different electrical charge. And D is the distance at which are located far from each other, the two electrical, uh, the two electrical charge. Well, <coughs> the atoms are electrically neutral which means that in one atom you have the same number of electrons and the same number of protons, okay? And uh, this number of electrons or this number of, proton, of protons that are present in one atom is called the atomic number. And the atomic number is pointed by the letter Z, okay? So, at this point of the course, I can tell you that the chemical fate of an element, namely the chemical behavior and also the physical behavior of this element, namely all the reaction that this element will give rise, all the compound to which it will give rise, depends on Z. Namely, it depends on the atomic number. We will see this fact during the next few lessons. Well, the various elements are characterized by the number Z, which I remember again is the number of electron which is equal to the number of protons. In one atom, the number of uh, neutron may slightly vary. After we will see this fact. Then we can see that uh, many experiments of which we do not take sufficient time to talk about demonstrated that protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom while electrons disorderedly move around the nucleus, thus forming a cloud of electric negative charge. You know, uh, this fact that I said just now has been demonstrated by many, many experiments that were done about the structure of the atom. In this course, which is a very short course, there is no time sufficient to describe this experiment. So I can just tell you that, that in the nucleus there are neutrons and protons, whereas electrons move in a very disordered manner 
around, in a space around the nucleus, thus creating an electronic cloud which is characterized by its negative electrical charge. Well, the dimension of atom are of the order of about 10 at minus 10 meters, okay? But the dimension of nuclei are of the order of 10 at minus 14 meters. Namely, it can be said that the nucleus in ten, is 10,000 times smaller than the whole atom. Then it must be said that the, the mass of atom ranges between 10 at minus 24 to 10 at minus 20 grams. Well, <coughs> from what we have been saying, it results that m minus z equal n, where m is the atomic mass of the element, z is the atomic number, and n is the neutron number. The fact is that m, the atomic mass of the element, is equal to the number of the protons and the number of the neutrons that are located into the nucleus of the atom. Because the electron have as a mass that can be neglected with respect to the mass of protons and the mass of neutrons. So, the difference between the mass of the atom, which is m, and the atomic number, which represents the number of protons, may be only the number of the neutrons that are present in the atom. So, this expression is explained. m minus z equal to m. Well, it must be said that in one element, every element exhibits a fixed value of z, namely hydrogen has one, helium has two, lithium has three, and so on. And the chemical and physical fate of every element is decided by the atomic number of the element. But the atom may have a varying number of neutrons. As an example, we, we can have in this way atoms that exhibit the same chemical behavior, the same physical properties, but exhibit different mass. As an example, we have that neon, which is an inert gas, exhibit Z10. But there are two different isotopes, two different atoms of neon, one which has atomic mass 20 and another one which has atomic mass 22. Then, if you, in the table where the atomic mass of the element is reported, is reported a mass, an atomic mass for neon, which is equal to 20.18. This number arises from the fact that it is performed a medium average weight of the two isotopes, the neon which exhibit 20 as atomic mass, the neon which exhibit 22 as atomic mass, and the result is just 20.183. Because it must be said, it must be known that in nature, we always have the same proportion of the various isotopes that compose one atom. As an example, for neon, we have that on 100 atoms, we have about 91 atoms which exhibit mass 20, and only 9 atoms that exhibit 22 as mass. So, I repeat, the number, the atomic mass, which is reported in the table of the atomic mass for neon, is just the medium average weight performed on the two 
atomic weight of the two isopos, dot 20 and 22, and performed on the proportion in which these two different isotopes are present in neon. Well, uh, let's see how an atom is done. The most simple thing to study this matter, which is quite complicated, is to see how the simplest atom that exists, namely the hydrogen atom, is done. You know, in uh, past times, a lot of models of the hydrogen atom were proposed. These models were able to explain such some experimental fact, but with the with going ahead of the progress of the sciences, there were other facts that this model were not able to explain. So this model failed and were discarded. Now, uh, the model which is universally accepted of the hydrogen atom is the quantum mechanic model of the hydrogen atom. You know, it would be very interesting to present the previous model of the hydrogen atom, but there is no sufficient time to show this model. So we go directly to the uh, to the quantum mechanic model of the hydrogen atom. And uh, I'm saying the fact that this quantum mechanic model of hydrogen atom is based on a series of experiments that were performed. And in particular, the experiments that gave a lot of information useful to understand how hydrogen atom is done were the experiment in which electrical discharge at very, very high difference of potential, something like 1000, 2000 volts, were uh, discharged through gases with very, very low pressure. This kind of experiment brought to the formulation of the quantum mechanic model of the hydrogen atom. Well, this model is quite complicated because it ascribes contemporaneously the properties of the mass particles and the properties of electromagnetic waves to the electron. The properties of mass particles are mass density, electrical charge, whereas the uh, electromagnetic waves, the particular, the, the, the quantities typical of the electromagnetic waves are the wavelength lambda, the frequency ni, the energy a. Uh, I think that at this point of the course, I should explain very briefly to you what is an electromagnetic radiation? You know, it is quite a complicated subject, and I will try to tell you in few words in a very, very simple way. And now I'm treating a matter which is not simple at all. So if you have the patience to follow me, you will understand sufficiently what is an electromagnetic wave. It, at the first moment it appears very difficult, but then if you follow with attention what I'm going to say to you in the, for the next few minutes, you will see that it's not very difficult to understand what is an electromagnetic wave. Well, according to the Maxwell theory of uh, electromagnetics, an electromagnetic radiation is a sinusoidal perturbation of an electric field and a magnetic field in perpendicular direction to the direction of propagation of the radiation and in direction perpendicular among them. It appears very difficult, but if you follow me very carefully what I'm going to say you in the next few minutes, you will understand 
Let's look at this diagram. Look at this. You know, the distance d, which is represented, which is reported on the abscissa axis, is the direction of propagation of the, electrical, the electromagnetic radiation. Okay? Well, if we consider a electric field which varies on the plane of this blackboard, we have that this electrical field which varies sinusoidally, reported in red, this electrical field varies perpendicularly to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. Okay? Now, let's have a look to the magnetic field. The magnetic field is represented in green. The magnetic field is a sinusoidal perturbation which varies in a plane that goes through the direction of propagation of the radiation itself, but it is also perpendicular to the plane of the blackboard. Namely, is the plane that gets out from the blackboard and is perpendicular to the plane of the blackboard. Okay, so the electrical field varies in this plane of the blackboard, the magnetic field varies in this plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the blackboard, and both contemporaneously are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic radiation. Okay? So I repeat, this is the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic radiation. The electrical field is a sinusoidal perturbation which varies over the plane of the blackboard, which is perpendicular to the direction of variation of propagation of the electromagnetic radiation. Whereas the magnetic field pointed in green varies in another plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the blackboard and passes exactly through the line which reports the direction of the radiation. Well, the wavelength of the radiation is the distance between the same phases of the sinusoidal. The frequency ni of the radiation is the number of time in which the same phase of a sinusoidal perturbation is repeated in the one unit time. So the dimension of a frequency are the inverse of a time. Okay? Well, uh, it must be said that the wavelength lambda and the frequency nu of our radiation are uh, bound to each other by these relations. Their product is equal to the C, which is a constant which represents the speed of light. So, the higher is the lambda, the, the wavelength of the radiation, the lower will be the frequency. And uh, conversely, the higher will be the frequency, the lower will be the um, lambda, the, the, the wavelength of the radiation. Then, it must be kept in mind that every radiation brings with itself an amount of energy which is equal to the product of the frequency Ni by H, which is the Planck constant, which means that 
the higher is the frequency of the radiation, the higher will be the energy brought by the radiation with itself. Okay? So, let's keep in mind this fact. Okay? Well, using the myth of, of undulatory mechanics, it is possible to describe a wave function, which is also said orbital function. What are the possibility of the wave functions, also said orbital function? This function allows to determine the probability of find of an electron in a particular portion of the space. Well, the probability is higher, the electron will spend an higher time there. Where the probability is lower, the electron will spend a lower time in this portion of the space. Okay? Then, the orbital function, also said the wave function, as another possibility, may describe the volume of space in which the electron spend the largest part of its time. When I say the largest part of this time, or its time, I say something like 97% of its time, 98% of its time. Namely, we can define the space in which the electron spends the large part of its time. One could wonder, but why the, this function does not describe the volume of space in which the electron spends the 100% of its time? Well, this function has its possibility. But this function tells you that the space in which the electron spends the 100% of its time is infinite. So, it does not serve, it is not useful at all, this position. But when we take a probability of finding the electron, which is just slightly lower than 100%, we find that this portion of space is quite small and is very well drawn, and so it can be understood very, very well. So, when we want to talk about the mathematic function which describe the volume in which the electron may be found with a particular probability, we talk about the wave function or the orbital function. If we say just the orbital, in the book of chemistry when we say orbital, orbital means orbital points, the volume of space in which the electron spends the largest part, something like the 97-98% of its time. Okay? So, if we say orbital, orbital is the volume of space where the electron has the probability of 97-98% of being found there, and so it spends there the 97-98% of its time, whereas when we want to talk about the mathematical function which describes the probability of finding the electron in a certain portion of the space, we talk about wave function and the orbital function. Okay? Understood? Okay. Let's go. Well, every orbital function, which gives the probability of finding an electron in a particular portion of the space, is a function that is constant on the time and represents a stationary state. To every stationary state may be ascribed an energy level. 
the electrons that are located in an orbital which is characterized at a particular energy level is say that is found at a particular energy level. Okay, promoting an electron from a particular stationary state to which correspond a particular energy to another stationary state described by another orbital function of higher energy demands energy that has to be supplied to electron itself. On the contrary, when one electron goes from a stationary state of higher energy down to a stationary state of a lower energy, the electron releases energy under the form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay? Look, during the experiment in which a high voltage electrical discharge is passed through a gas at low pressure, then the, gas, the electrons of the gas are excited by this large amount of energy, and then the electron of this atom goes from a higher level of energy to a lower energy level and they release energy under the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, let's repeat what I've just said up to now. To every orbital, it represents a stationary state, namely a, a function which is constant on time. And to every stationary state, um, energy is ascribed. When electron goes to a stationary state of a lower energy to a stationary state of higher energy, energy must be supplied to electron. Whereas on the contrary, when an electron goes from a stationary state of higher energy to a stationary state of lower energy, it releases energy under the form of electromagnetic radiation. A very, very, very strange occur, a very, very strange fact occur. The fact is that the energy may not assume whatever value, but may assume only particular value. To let you understand this fact, I will make you an example. Let's suppose, you know, this is a balloon, you know, I represent on this drawing a balloon that moves on a plane. Okay? When you have a plane and the balloon is kept by a rope, the balloon may be located in whatever point of this plane. If the position of the balloon is higher, the potential energy of the balloon will be higher. If the balloon is located in a lower position, the energy of the balloon will be lower because the potential energy of the balloon is given by the product of the weight of the balloon P by the, by the difference of height between the reference plane and the level at which the balloon is kept. So, when a balloon moves on a plane like this, the balloon may assume whatever values. At this example represents a situation where a balloon namely an electron, may assume whatever value. This does not occur in the atom. Why? Look at this. An electron in one atom behaves like a balloon which is located on the step of one stair. Namely, the balloon may be on this step may be on this step, 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 may be on this step. 
okay? But the balloon cannot be located between two different steps. So the energy that assumes the balloon, which is given by the product of the weight P of the balloon and the difference of level between the balloon and between the reference plane, as you can stay here, you can stay here, you can stay here, but you cannot stay between two different steps. Energy of the uh, balloon may vary not continuously, may, may vary may only uh, assuming particular fixed value of the energy. In practice, the electrons in one atom behave in this way, not in this way. In the atoms we have a fundamental energy header, which is the lowest, then there is another higher, then there is another higher, then there is another higher, then there is another higher. And more ahead you go, the higher becomes the energy, the smaller will become the difference of energy between the two different states. You know, this fact that I've been telling you, it will appear very strange to you, but they are demonstrated by the experiment of electrical discharge at very high voltage performed in a gas with very low pressure. The fact is that when you discharge this electrical charge to, uh, uh, through this gas with low pressure, you um, have only particular wavelength of the radiation emitted by the electron of this atom. If the situation were like this, you will have whatever wavelength. The fact that you have only one, two, three, four wavelength, it means that a particular wavelength is uh, related to this difference of energy. Another wavelength is related to this other difference of level. Uh, another wavelength is connected to this other difference of energy. So, if we had an electron we made assume whatever values of energy, we had in the emission of the light in this experiment, we would have had the emission of whatever wavelength. The fact that we have only one, two, three, four wavelengths, different wavelengths, it means that only a small number of wavelength, only a small number of energy level are allowed, okay? Okay, we can, uh, we can imagine the hydrogen atom done in this way. We have a fundamental energy level, which is, let's say, the energy the energy level one, the one in which the as low as possible energy is kept by the electron. Well, this energy level complies with only one orbital function and this said an orbital function of type S. In few minutes I will explain what this letter S means. Then, if we give some energy to the electron, the electron may be promoted to the energy level 2. And this energy level 2 complies with four different orbital functions. 
one of type S and three of type P. If we further give energy, we give further energy to the electron, the electron will be promoted to the energy level 3, which complies with nine orbital function, one of type S, three of type P, five of type D. Again, if we still give further energy to the electron, the electron will be promoted to level 4, which complies to 16 orbital function, one of type S, three of type P, five of type D, seven of type S. I repeat the fact that the existence of these orbital function of this energy level is um, demonstrated with no doubt by the experiments of electrical discharge in the gas with low pressure. The fact that only particular radiation of only particular frequency are emitted by electron of hydrogen atom means that electron may assume only particular weight of the energy. Okay? Now, let's see what does S, P, F, D mean. Well, in the fundamental state, in the fundamental energetic level 1, the, there is only one function, one orbital function. And we say that the orbital function is an orbital function of type S. The orbital, the, the, the letter S means spherical. It means that the portion of space in which the electron may be found with a high probability, such as 97, 98, it has a spherical shape. You know, the best representation of this orbital function of type P is the one that is reported here, that now I'm pointing. Look at this. When the dots are more frequent, are more crowded, the probability of finding the electron is higher. Where the dots are less crowded, are farther from each other, it means that the probability of finding the electron is lower. Okay? So, this kind of representation of the orbital is very, very, very uh, fruitful. Look at this. The higher is the probability of finding the electron, the higher will be the radius of the sphere. And if we want to have the 100% probability of finding the electron, the radius of the sphere will be infinite. Okay? But if we consider only a, a, a probability which is slightly lower than 100%, we have something like this. Namely, we have that in a very small sphere of something like 1 per 10 at minus 10 meters, we have a probability of finding the electron of about 97, 98%. <clears throat> then, in this other drawing, is represented the uh, representation of the, of the function 2s. When we give some energy to the electron and the electron is promoted by, from the level 1 to the level 2, we have that uh, we have four different orbital functions. One is of type S, the other three are of type P. The function of type S 
S means that the symmetry of the orbital is always a spherical symmetry. So the probability of finding the electron is higher in this spherical shell and then in a sphere which is very close to the nucleus of the atom. Look, the nucleus of the atom is located in the origin of the tree axis. Okay? Now, let's see how are done the three orbital function of type P. When we have uh, the second energetic level, we have said that one function is of type S and thus exhibit a spherical symmetry, and the other three functions are of type P. Type P means that the portion of the space in which the probability of finding the electron is high, this volume is composed by two spherical parts which are tangent in just one point. And the point in which these two spherical parts touch with each other is the point in which the nucleus of the atom is located. Also in this kind of representation, we have that where the dots are more crowded, the probability of finding the electron is higher, whereas where the dots are uh, less crowded, the probability of finding the electron is lower. Okay? Then, we have three different p function. This p function must differ in something. And in what they differ? In they differ in the axis of symmetry. You know, one has the axis of symmetry, which is x. The other one has the, has the, the axis of symmetry, which is y. The other one has the axis of symmetry, which is z. Okay? When you have a, a Cartesian system of reference in the space, which is created by three axes that are perpendicular among themselves. Well, you have an, as, an ax X, an ax Y, an ax Z. These three axes are the axes of symmetry of the three different p orbital. The first p orbital has x as x of symmetry. The second p orbital has the y x as x of symmetry. The third p orbital has the z axis as the axis of symmetry. Well, then we saw that when we go to the third level, we have one function of type S and we know the symmetry of orbital of type S. We have a three function of type P and we know the, uh, the shape, the symmetry of type P, orbital of type P. And then we have also orbital of type D. Well, the shape of the orbital of type D, I will not report. You know, this is an elementary course of chemistry, so it is useless to show the complicated shape of the five orbital of type D. Well, but in the, uh, in the book that I advised, surely you can find the shape of this orbital. But it's not important to understand the shape of this orbital. It is completely useless. And when you go to the fourth level of energy, you will have one function of type S, and we know the symmetry of 
orbital load type S. We will have three functions of type P and we know the symmetry of orbitals of type P and five function orbitals of type D and we did not see but if you want you can find it and we'll also have seven, seven function of type F which have still more complicated shape but it's not use, useful that you go to see this, the shape of this orbital. Well, when you have atoms older than hydrogen, the atoms older than hydrogen are composed by a higher number of protons and a higher number of electrons. And the electrons are located in the various orbital that I, am, I have showed you up to now. In filling this orbital, some rule must be followed. In particular, it was found that in every orbital, a maximum of two electrons may be located. And the two electrons that may be located in one orbital must have different spin. What does different spin mean? It means that electrons move in a very disordered way in the space described by the orbital function of the atom. But the electrons also rotate on themselves. Obviously, electron may rotate clockwise and may rotate counterclockwise. So, when two electrons are located in the same orbital, one has to rotate clockwise and the other must rotate counterclockwise. Okay? Understood? So, another rule that must be followed in putting the electron in the various orbital is this energetic scheme that I'm going to show you on the blackboard. Uh, the electron firstly fill the orbitals with lower energy. You know, in nature, whatever tends to assume the smallest energy it is possible. Now I'm going to do a very simple experiment that will convince you of the fact that in nature whatever tend to assume the smallest energy possible. Look at this small object of plastic. If I have in my hand it has a particular value of potential energy which is given by the weight of this plastic object multiplied by the difference of height of level between the level on my hand and the level, for example, of a reference plane which is the level of this uh, desk. If I leave this plastic object to fall down. Why this plastic object falls down? Because when it is on the table, it has a potential energy which is lower than potential energy that had when it was on my hand. Why? Because in nature, a natural trend of whatever occurs in nature is that whatever naturally goes towards a situation of lower energy. So, an electron, when it has to locate into the orbital of one atom, spontaneously locate in the orbital of the lowest possible energy. So when we have the hydrogen atom, 
the hydrogen atom is composed by one proton and one electron, and one electron is located spontaneously in the energy level which exhibits the lowest value possible of the energy, which is one half. To upgrade the energy of this electron, I should give energy to this electron, and the energy of the electron will jump from one half to two halves. If I do not give any more energy to this electron, this electron will lose energy and will jump from 2s to 1s. And it will emit a radiation which brings an energy which is equal to the difference energy level of these two energy levels. Okay? So, when we have different atoms, we have more protons and more electrons. As an example, helium has Z equal to, which means that we have two protons and two electrons. Helium has also atomic mass 4, which means that it also has two, neut two neutrons. Well, the two electrons of helium are both located in the atom, in the, elect, in the energy level 1s. When we go to lithium, lithium has Z equal 3, and it has three electrons. So these three electrons, where are located? The first one in the orbital 1s the second one in the orbital 1s, the third one must go in the orbital 2s. So, look at this. Look, here I wrote the electronic structure of lithium. What does electronic structure mean? You know, this square that I drew it here represents the orbital 1s. The first arrow with uh, the arrow which goes up represents the first electron with a particular spin. The second arrow with the arrow which goes down represents the second electron which has the opposite spin. Then we have the third electron, which is located in the, in the uh, orbital 2s. So the electronic structure of lithium is 1s2, to mean that in the 1s orbital, two electrons are located, and 2s1, to mean that in the uh, 2s orbital, only one electron is located. Look then at this. Here we have the electronic symbol of lithium. You know, in the next few lessons, we will see that the number of electrons which is located in the outer shell of an atom are very, very important in relation to the ability of this atom to create bond with the other atom. So in the electronic symbol of the lithium, it is rapidly evident that the lithium has only one electron in its outer shell, okay? Then, when we go to the fourth element, we go to beryllium. Beryllium has a Z equal to four, namely it has four electrons and the four protons. We lo must locate these four electrons according to the electronic scheme 
that we have just seen. First of all, is filled the lowest energy enel, the leverage enel which exhibit the lowest energy, 1s. So 1s1, 1s2. Then the other two electrons are located in the orbital which exhibit an immediately higher value of the energy, namely is 2s. As there are four electrons, 2s1, 2s2. So the electronic structure of beryllium is this one, z equal to 4. In the first orbital 1s, there are two electrons, 1s1, 1s2. In the orbital 2s, there are two other electrons, 2s1, 2s2. The electronic symbol of beryllium is this one. Here there are two points, that means that beryllium has two electrons in the outer shell. And we will see that the chemical behavior of lithium and chemical behavior of beryllium is completely different because of the fact that lithium has only one electron in its outer shell and beryllium has two electrons in its outer shell. Okay? So let's go to boron. Boron has Z equal to 5, namely it has 5 electrons and 5 protons. The various orbitals must be filled according to the energetic scheme that is reported in this figure. So, the first two electrons fill the orbital 1s, which is the one of the lowest energy. So, 1s1, 1s2. Then, other two electrons go to fill the level 2s, so 2s1, 2s2. And the fifth electron will go into the 2p electron. And so the electronic structure of boron will be 1s1, 1s1, 1s2, 2 electron. Other 2 electron, 2s1, 2s2, we have 2 and 2 electron, 4 electron. The fifth electron, 2p1. The electronic symbol of boron will be this one. Namely, we have two electrons here, that are these two, and one electron here. So it is clear that boron has three electrons in its outer shell. And the chemical behavior of boron depends on the fact that boron has three electrons in his outer shell. Now, now, let's go ahead. When we go to carbon, carbon has a z equal to 6. z equal to 6 means that we have six electrons and six protons. These six electrons will fill the various the various uh, orbitals according to this energetic scheme. We have that the first two electrons will go in the orbital 1s, so 1s1, 1s2, two electrons. Then other two electrons will go in the orbital 2s, 2s1, 2s2, 2 and 2, four orbital. And then we have two other orbital and one will go in 2p1 and other in 2p2. So the electronic structure of carbon will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Look at this. When we have different orbital which exhibit the same energy, the various electrons 
will be located in different, in different orbitals. They will not locate in the same orbital. It is as if the electrons wants to be more comfortable. As the difference, the energy of the various 2p energy levels is exactly the same, they prefer to locate one in an orbital of type 2p and one in another different orbital of type 2p. Well, then the electronic symbol of carbon will be this one. The two electrons that are in the orbital 2s are these two electrons. This electron here is the electron which is, draw, which is drawed here, and this electron here is this electron. Okay? So let's see nitrogen. Nitrogen has Z equal to 7. So Z equal to 7, it means that we have 7 electrons and 7 protons. The 7 electron will be located according to the energetic scheme that we have just seen. 2 in the orbital of type 1s, so 1s2. 2 in the orbital of type 2s, so 2s1, 2s2, we are 4 electrons. And the other three electron, one in 2p, one in the other 2p, one in the other 2p. And so we have an electronic structure, which is this one. Seven electron, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, seven electron. The electronic symbol of nitrogen is this one. The two electrons that are in 2s are this one. The one electron was, that is in the px is this one. The electron which is in the orbital py is this one. The electron which is in the orbital pz is this one. So this is the the mm electronic symbol of nitrogen. Let's go to oxygen. When we go to oxygen, Z is equal to 8. Namely, we have 8 electrons and 8 protons. And the various electron fills the various orbital function always according to the energetic scheme which was previously proposed. So two electron in the orbital 1s, 1s1, 1s2. Two electron in the orbital 2s, 2s1, 2s2. Then one electron in 2px, one electron in 2py, one electron in 2pz. We have arrived to seven electron. The eighth electron is located in 2px. So we have an electronic structure, which is this one. 1s1, 1s2. 2s1, 2s2. 2p1, 2p2. 2p3, 2p4. The electronic symbol oxygen is this one. These two electrons that are in 2s are this one. These two electrons that are in P2, Px are this one. These two, this electron that is in orbital 2, Py is this one. This electron which is located in the orbital 2, Pz is this one. And as ever, the um, electronic symbol make you sure that there are six electrons in the outer level of oxygen. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And I repeat again that the chemical behavior of oxygen 
will depend on the fact that it has six electron in this in its outer shell. Okay? Then let's go to fluorine. Fluorine F has Z equal to nine. Namely, which means that we have nine electron and we have nine protons. These nine electrons will allow to fill the various orbital according to the energetic scheme which was previously presented. Two in the orbital, one S of the lowest energy. One S1, one S2. Two in the orbital, two S, two S1, two S2. Four electrons. Two PX, two PY, two PZ, seven electrons. Other two electrons are needed, one into Px, one into Py. So the electronic structure will be this one. 1s1, 1s2, two electrons. 2s1, 2s2, four electrons. 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, seven electrons. 2px, 2py, nine electrons. Okay? The electronic symbol of fluorine must denote that fluorine has seven electrons in this outer shell. Look at this. Two electrons in the 2s are this one. Two electrons in the 2p, this one. Two electrons in the 2p, y are this one. One electron in 2pz, this one. Okay? Now, let's see neon, it will be the last one, and then we will see something else, something different. I wanted to repeat many times the construction of the electronic structure, just to show you that the construction of the electronic structure of the various elements, it's quite an easy thing, it's not a complicated thing, okay? So, let's go ahead. Neon has Z equal to 10. It means that we have 10 electrons and 10 protons. And that these 10 electrons must be located according to the energetic scheme that we have just been so. so Two electrons in the orbital of the lowest level, 1s1, 1s2. Two electrons in the orbital 2s, 2s1, 2s2. Four electrons, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, seven electrons. 2p1, 2p2, 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 we arrive to 10 electrons. Let's see the electronic structure, and we have that. 1s1, 1s2. 2s1, 2s2. 2p1, 2p2, 2p3. 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. The electronic symbol of neon is this one. We have eight electron in the outer shell, and we have the two electrons that are in the orbital 2s are this one. The two electrons that are located in the 2px are this one. The two electrons that are located in 2py are this one. The two electrons that are located in 2pz are this one. Okay? and so on. Now, you know, when we arrive to uh, sodium, Z is equal to 11. So, the way in which the various orbitals are filled, it is always the same. Firstly, are filled the orbitals of lower energy, and afterward are filled the orbital of the higher energy. 
So look at this. Z equal to 11 means that there are 11 electrons and that there are 11 protons. These 11 electrons are located by filling firstly the energy of the, the level of lower energy and then the level with higher energy. So let's have a look. The first two electrons in 2s, in 1s, 1s1, 1s2. Then we have two other electrons in 2s2 and 2s, 2s1, 2s2, four electron. Then we fill the orbital of type 2p, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, and we arrive to 10 electron. The 11th electron is located in the orbital of type s, and it is the 3s. The electronic symbol of sodium is this one, because in the electronic symbol we have to uh, report only the electrons that are located in the outer shell of the atoms. The outer shell of the atom in sodium is the third energy level. And how many electrons are located in the third energy level? Only one electron. And so the electron that is here is reported here. Now, let's have a look to the electronic structure of lithium and to the electronic symbol of lithium. Look, the electronic symbol of lithium is equal to the electronic symbol of sodium. Why? Because what lithium and sodium have in common is that both lithium and sodium has only one electron in their outer shell. Okay? Magnesium Z equal 12. We have 12 electrons and 12 protons. The various orbitals are filled going from the orbital of lower energy up to the orbital of higher energy. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 10 electron. 2p, a 3s1, 3s2, 12 electron. Only two electrons are located in the outer shell of these elements. So the electronic symbol of magnesium will be this one, because the electronic symbol must report only the electrons that are located in the outer shell. In the outer shell there will be only two electrons, and so these are the two electrons that are located in the outer shell of magnesium. If you uh, compare the electronic symbol of magnesium with the electronic symbol of beryllium, you will see that beryllium and magnesium will exhibit the same electronic symbol. We will see in the next lesson that the chemical behavior of beryllium and the chemical behavior of magnesium is very similar to each other. Why? Because they have only two electrons in their outer shell as well as the behavior of sodium is very similar to the behavior of lithium. Why? Because they exhibit only one electron in their outer shell. 
Lithium has the outer shell is the second energetic level. Sodium has his outer shell, the third electronic, the third energetic level. Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, when we arrive to aluminium, aluminium exhibit Z equal to 13. So it will have 13 electron and 13 protons. So the various electrons are located according to the, the energetic scheme that we have been seeing previously. So they will be filled. Firstly, the energetic level with lower energy, and then the energetic level with continuously increasing energy. So, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 10 electron, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1. The electronic symbol of aluminium will be this one, and the electronic symbol of aluminium will be similar to the electronic sample of boron because they exhibit in the outer shell only three electrons. So going ahead, we have that we have silicon. Silicon has Z equal to 14, which means that we have 14 electrons and 14 protons. We have to locate 14 electron. The 14 electron find location firstly in the energetic level of lower energy, and then they will fill the various energetic level with increasing energy. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. Then 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2. So we have that silicon exhibit four electron in the outer shell. And its electronic symbol is this one, which is equal to electronic symbol of carbon, which is this one. So we will have that carbon and silicon will exhibit similar chemical behavior in as much as they have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. Then we have phosphorus. Phosphorus has Z equal to 15, namely 15 electrons, 15 protons. So it means that we have these electrons will be located according to the, the energetic scheme that we have been many times. This filling, firstly, the energetic level with lower energy, and then increasing the energy of the various energetic level. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p6, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2, 3p4. So we have an um, electronic symbol of phosphorus. The two electrons that are here are these two electrons. The electron that is here is this electron. The electron that is in the 2py is this electron. The electron located in the 3pz is this one. Okay? So we have an electronic symbol of phosphorus, which is similar to the electronic symbol of nitrogen. Then let's go to sulfur. Sulfur, we had Z equal to 16. So 16 electrons, 16 proton, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p6. 3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 10 electron. 3s1, 3s2, 12 electron. 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 16 electron. 
and we will have an electronic sample which is similar to the electronic sample of oxygen. Then we have chlorine. Chlorine has atomic number 17. So 17 electrons, 17 protons. Always the various uh, uh, level uh, are filled according always to the same energetic scheme. So 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, we are 10 electrons. 3s1, 3s2, 12 electrons. 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 17 electrons. And we have an electronic symbol of chlorine which is similar to the electronic sample or fluorine because they have seven electrons in their outer shell. Finally, we have that argon has Z equal to 18, 18 electrons, 18 protons. These 18 electrons fill the various orbital according always to the same energetic scheme one in which firstly the orbital with lower energy are filled and then the orbital with increasing energy are filled and so we have 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 10 electron, 3s1, 3s2, 12 electron, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, and we arrive to 18 electron. Once the 3p energy sublevel is completely filled, it is possible to see on the scheme of the energetic level that the sublevel which has an energy immediately higher than 3p is 4s and not 3d. Look at this. When we have filled the 3p, the energetic level which is an energy immediately higher is not 3D, is 4S. So the 4S orbital is filled. So we have that when we arrive to Z equal to 90, we have this electronic structure, 19 electron, 19 protons. These 19 electrons must be filled, must be located according to the scheme, to the energetic scheme that we have seen previously. We have 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 10 electrons. 3s1, 3s2, 12 electrons. 3p1, 3p2, 3p 3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 18 electron. The, the 19th electron is located in the orbital 4s because, again, look, the energy level immediately higher than 3p is not 3d whereas is 4s. So firstly is filled 4s and only when the 4s is completely filled the 3d will be began to be filled. So when we go to the element which exhibit Z equal 20, which is calcium. The electronic structure is 1s2, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, 
to P1, to P2, to P3, to P4, to P5, to P6, 10 electrons. 3s1, 3s2, 12 electrons. 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 18 electrons. They are missing only two electrons. These two electrons will be located in the 4s and not in the 3d. And so we will have 4s1, 4s2. And the electronic symbol of calcium will be this one, in which two electrons are evident. They are these two electrons here. Look, the electronic symbol of calcium is this one, and it is similar to the one of magnesium and to the one of beryllium. Okay? Then the symbol of lithium with only one electron in its outer shell is similar to the one of lithium, the one of sodium, and the one of potassium. Only when we arrive to Z equal to 21, only in this situation the energy level 3D will be began to be filled. Because look at this. After the 3P, the energy level with immediately higher energy is 4S. And after the 4S, the energy level with immediately higher energy will be 3D. And only when the 3D is filled, the 4P will be began to be filled. So, let's build the electronic structure of scandium, which has atomic number 21. And we have 1S1, 1S2, 2S1, 2S2, 2P1, 2P2, 2P3, 2P4, 2P5, 2P6. So, these are 10 electrons. 3s1, 3s2, so these are 12 electrons. 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 20, uh, 18 electrons. 4s1, 4s2, 20 electrons. 3d1. So now I stop here. I will not build the electronic structure of the wall number of elements that are present in nature, but what can be said is that the element that will, that the, will come after scandium will have another electron in the 3D orbital, then another in the 3D orbital, and then in this 3D orbital will be located 10 electrons. Only when the 3D energetic level will be filled, the 4P energetic level will be filled. When the 4P energetic level will be filled, immediately after the 4P, there will be the 5S. After the 5S, there will be the 4D. After the 4D, there will be the 5P. After the 5P, there will be the 6S. And after the 6S, there will be the 4F. After the 4F, there will be the 5D. And after the 5D, there will be the 6P. So, following this energetic scheme, you can build the electronic structure or whatever atom. Okay? Well, the lesson is over. It is sufficient. We have done a lot today. And so we will see in the next lesson. Bye-bye.